So going on with uh, volume one of The Adventures of Susan B. Lang, Scuba Diver Extraordinaire, um, of the three-part book series to discuss the different aspects. Left off on page 88. Uh, when I was around three or five years old, Sonny or Sony or Sonia and her friend Nora were sitting on the back porch at the white metal table with matching chairs as I crawled up the stairs to go for a quick dip in the pool. Then I learned how to make the pool swirl with me. I swam in circles by myself at first, as fast as I could to make the current flow, and the faster I went around the exterior part inside of the pool, the more the water caught up with me. I showed this to Nora's two sons that were about the same age, Alejandro, and I can't remember what the other one's name was, um, and then as well as the male who grew up living in the house across the street when I was a child uh, named Timothy Duty. His mom was named Bernadette, his dad was named Skip, and, or at least he went by Skip in my bit. And then um, his oldest sister was Suzanne. But I had done so by that time for many years on my own. Uh, at the time, I thought if I could get more people to do such with me, the water funnel would be much quicker and much faster. However, those particular three males got out of the pool before I was ready to, and well before the water current was as fast as I could get it on my own. I would change the pattern of the water current at the points when I would get bored and felt like it, and I'd make the waves throughout the swimming pool back and forth from corner to corner after getting the flow of water in a circular motion. Now, once one of my babysitter's neighbors had a son named Damien, who I was friends with. Though I had been made fun of later in life about having a friend with that name, I did not laugh when those females of the Jade Wolf Coven joked about him, uh, Christine especially. Damien was a different sort of individual, though, who had various aspects in his personal life that were different than mine. In some ways, we connected because of some of those differences. He refused to get into the water when I would play at the pool at Sony or Sonia's and Joe's or Jose's, but I would make him laugh when I would splash him while he was sitting on the deck of the pool with the brown lattice fencing against his back. We would usually be talking, and when he would least expect it, I would kick, keep my legs together, kick, and make my mermaid fins flick the water to splash him. He would initially get upset and yell out, Susan, why? And I'd giggle and swim around the center of the pool saying, what are you going to do? Usually he'd sit back down and say after brushing himself off, when you get out, I'm going to get you. And I would laugh and say, only if you can catch me this time. By then, Duke would usually wander onto the deck to sit next to Damien, and then Damien would pet Luke's head very nervously because Duke was watching him. Um, when I would swim around a bit before getting out of the water, and then would be when Damien would get up to chase me, and Duke would simply stand up watching. Damien, at that point, would whine a bit and say, that's not fair, Duke is here. You know how he is about you. I'd grab my towel and wrap it around myself and chuckle at him, meaning Damien. That's not my fault, he's my protector puppy. As I pet him on the head, Duke would give me a quick kiss on my hand. Inevitably later when Damien and I would play catch or football in the backyard when Duke was inside the house, Damien would take that chance to tackle me and I would inevitably squirm around to get free. Running away again laughing, catch me if you can. Damien would run and we'd begin playing tag and the games would continue. When my neighbor across the street, Timothy, started being babysat at Sony or Sonia's and Joe or Jose's house, then Damien grew a bit jealous of the time Timothy and I spent together at the babysitter's house. Just as a year younger, just a year younger than Damien and I,
Damien seemingly would throw fits on the days Timothy was around despite what I could do to keep them on a more friendly basis. Whereas Damien was extremely aggressive, Timothy was more mild-mannered, and because of his mild mannerisms, I would have to get more involved between the two to prevent Damien from going after T Timothy as aggressively. Usually at the pool would be when Timothy would then turn the tables on Damien, knowing Damien would not get into the pool, and I then would have to focus the attention that I had in the opposite way and remind Timothy just because on land I have to calm Damien down from going after you doesn't mean because we're in the water I don't have to calm you down from going after Damien. It's balanced and equal time together, just be calm. Seemingly, Damien was a bit jealous of the water aspects with Timothy, where Timothy was simple, seemingly jealous of the aspects on land with Damien. I remember one day at the pool, the two got into it, and when Timothy pushed Damien into the pool, I had to jump in and get Damien out of the water when he was panicking. Though he scratched and clawed while freaking out, I had to go underneath the water to haul him out of the pool by grabbing his waist and lifting him upward. However mad he was, he was able to get back onto the pool deck, and then the two did not speak with one another and only spoke with me when the other was not in the area. There had been time which truly upset Damien when he learned about the conversation Timothy and I had a discussion about in reference of one of my other babysitters at the time, and he asked me, what do you do with your other babysitters at your parents' house? When I told Damien and Timothy about this in different discussions, Damien especially was really upset when he found out what was going on at the time at my biological parents' house. But Timothy wanted to be shown, so I showed Timothy what that particular babysitter named David preferred to do as soon as my biological parents' car had been out of the driveway for longer than 10 minutes. And that became one of, as Timothy said, his favorite times when Sonny would go tell us to take a nap. As we were sleeping in the same room where Sony or Sonia kept her collection of Christmas Barbie dolls with a couple of bird cages for the African, African gray parrots she and Jose or Joe had saved and rescued. After a while, though, Sony or Sonia came downstairs and caught the two of us and refused to us to refuse to let us take a nap in the same room. Each day Timothy would keep, be kept upstairs and I would and I would be downstairs taking a nap while he, Timothy would cry to Sony or Sonia where he preferred to sleep and Sony or Sonia would not let him go back to take a nap downstairs with me. However, when I was in eighth grade and around the time of second period an announcement came over the speakers from the principal saying everyone listen up. This is your principal speaking. Many of you know Damien, and because of the weather, his dad got into a car accident on the way to school. Damien is in the hospital. Please pray for him and his family. I looked to Paul, who is in my class, and when I lowered my head for a few minutes, when I realized the te teacher was teaching class, Paul leaned over and asked me, Susan, what the fuck was that? I replied, Paul, you don't get it, do you? He shook his head side to side, signaling no, and I said, Damien is in the hospital, and his dad died on the impact of the collision. Paul said, laughing, you're joking, Susan. I said, Paul, I am not. I felt and feel that his dad died instantly, and thankfully without any pain. Damien, on the other hand, he's in limbo. I said a prayer for him and his mom. Paul laughed. You don't know who Damien is. I said, yes, Paul, I do know him, but that's not important right now. His mom needs all the strength that she can get right now. Paul said, you don't know that. You don't know his mom. I said, yes, I do. She has seen me playing with Damien since he was around three years old. She might not know my name, but she knows me. Later in the week, I saw Paul in the hallway near Damien's locker and walked up to him, putting my hand on his shoulder. I said, Paul, I'm sorry for your loss. He turned around and looked at me standing behind him, and he said, he's going to be here tomorrow. I know it because I've been wishing all week long. I wrapped my arms around Paul and said, I know many have. He can't come back to school. 
Today, his mom is going to be asked a question, and I truly hope she will not have to make that decision. Paul asked me, what decision, why? I said, if she were to get her wish and you got yours, she would never be able to look at Damien without seeing his father and missing him. Damien himself would not be the same person you once knew, and you are going to be mad if he does not remember you and what you guys did together. He will have a similar personality, but he will not be the exact same as he once was. That is too much for everyone at this school, and is far too much for his mom. She is younger, and she will find her a new life in ways she never saw possible before. She will go through a rough patch, because then she will find who she was meant to be with. All of the pain she felt when she was with Damien's dad will wash away from her, and she will be happier than she's ever been. Paul pushed his... Paul used his arms to push my arms off of his shoulders in disbelief. Who do you think you are telling me that? He asked me. I said, Paul, I am just giving you this warning because all of the people in, of all of the people in this school you have a chance to make an impact differently than others. You will see what I said is real, and though you tease me about wanting to go to the Naval Academy, you will see why. When you see why again, you will have some difficulties, but then you will find a path and you will shine. The others will eventually find their way, but you will be a guiding light. He said, no, Susan, no, Susan. Damien will return to school. I shook my head. No, Paul, he will not. Paul yelled at me in my face, I hate you so much right now. I said calmly, no, Paul, you are angry with me because I am the only one who is telling you the truth. You think you hate me, but you know you don't. You hate the fact that I am right. That is what you hate. Paul tried playing it off and laughed, saying, Susan, you're so weird. Then I laughed and said, tell me something I don't know. Paul said, Susan, what makes you think I'm going to do anything? As I started walking towards my next class and I looked back at Paul and said, because you have a fire that will be able to burn bright through the garbage and you will see through it all quicker than others. It will take some time, but you will see. Later in the week, the announcement went over the system of the school of Damien's passing in the same class as the original one. I looked over to Paul, leaned closer to his ear, and said, Paul, I promise it will be okay. Where others were allowed to go to Damien's funeral, I was not allowed to attend. And then the graduation occurred for that year for Marlboro Middle School, before we each went our own separate ways. Later, when I had been with the Jade Wolf Coven and Damien's spirit came through the board, those females thought it was the devil. I said, no, that's my friend. One female named Christine or Christine said, no, that's the devil. I said, no, I had a friend named Damien when I grew up and when, and we went to hang out in the backyard at my babysitter's house. Then the events of which I wrote in my first book and the second book had commenced further. Really quickly in that regard, um, as far as the Jade Wolf Coven was concerned, any time ritual was done, I was the one who cast the circle. I actually had to teach them how to cast a circle. That was not the first time, nor the first group of females that I had to do that with and explain how to do that. And so it was one of those, I don't know what books you have read or what you've been a part of, but um, you don't know anything about what you're playing with, so you might not want to get involved with that. However, they did as they did. And back to the water and ex oceanic experiences before scuba diving. One of the first times I went to the beach as a child had been to Sandy Hook, and I toddled off on my own when no one was paying attention to me, crawling along the shoreline, and trying my best to avoid the sharks in the sand. There was a lot of debris which had washed up onto the land and to avoid getting hurt was extremely difficult. There had been quite a few times I'd lost my diver, 
because of the weight of the water dragging, dragging that down. When I was in Marlboro Recreation Camp and the field trips took the campers to Point Pleasant Beach, as soon as I could get into the oceanic waters, I did. I ran as fast as my little feet would move across the hot sand, kicked off my clothes, and ran into the ocean waves. There were a few times when getting out onto the bus when leaving, which the camp counselors had scolded me for going out so far and or for so fast into the ocean, but not while we were at the beach itself. My first year in summer camp was my first time of seeing what I learned are called scuba divers. As there were a couple of different occasions, I had seen a group of people whom I would later learn were called scuba divers who had been walking along the black rock jetties. I was curious to see where they were going when I saw the first group, and since I was already swimming in the ocean at that time, I tried following along perpendicular to the location they were walking. There had been a male in a suit with black pants and a white button-down shirt with a silver suitcase made out of shiny metal which caught my attention as he walked with the scuba divers. Sometimes I had seen him there and it would be a gold color cufflinks, whereas other times I would see him, they were silver colored, but a different shade. I had seen him many times before and after other times, usually near the water. Depending upon which tie clasp he was wearing depended upon the color of the cufflinks were he was wearing at the time. Though, he, though the group had gotten their gear on and went into the water before I could swim out to where they were, I had fun swimming out to the edge of the jetties. Though I tried to find the scuba divers when they had gone into the waters of the ocean, I found other ways to keep myself preoccupied when I could not find them. On one occasion, I looked back to the wooden pier to see that male with binoculars, and I thought he and I had made eye contact through the binoculars since he almost dropped them, but caught the binoculars just before they landed on the wooden boardwalk. I shrugged it off thinking maybe a bumblebee had flown by him, or maybe a bird, unless I meet that male and he tells me otherwise. I could only guesstimate as such. At Point Pleasant Beach, as well as at Seaside Beach, though when at Seaside I had to slip away from my camping group, as we were supposed to stay at the water park instead of going to the ocean. It's a little late for that reference in certain regards now. As per my usual, I would swim out as far as I could possibly go to where the orange buoys floated. Though I cannot remember which one had the taller floating buoys that I could climb onto that had bowl type lips surrounding the tall cylinders within the bowl and a white and yellow set of circular stripes for the different back areas. I also cannot remember which ones were the bobbers, as far as beaches, in the shape of a bigger and more solid beach ball, but either way, both of the different beaches and matching types of whatever style along the line were vertically lined out in the ocean along the curves of the shoreline. And that's to page 100 <laughs> of uh, the first book of um, The Adventures of Susan Meeling, Scuba Diver Extraordinaire. That's me, Reverend Meeling, Reverend Susan Meeling, Susan Meeling. My legal name is different. Lady Dory Bell, and I, I've got a few names. And so, you know, I'm gonna upload this one and make another video in a different reference.